Well, let's see. Uh, let's see what our agenda says. We're supposed to do at one thirty here. Hmm. Can I ah, I guess. It's me. Uh, so welcome everyone. It's good to see everybody online. It's more people than we thought, and uh, which is really kind of nice. Jerry and I were on here doing this yesterday, and seeing if it actually worked, which it seems to actually work, which is nice. Um, so welcome, and that's our, as far as I know, and I know Bob, you would be able to uh, address this. Uh, I think this is the first time we've had a SAC meeting online ever. Uh, um, I've never been to one before. <laughs> a computer <laughs> club, well, just computers, yeah. There you go. Uh, and uh, Bob was one of the original members of SAC back in uh, 1985. Uh, uh, so, November 1985. Yep. Uh, so uh, he uh, pretty much had the early history down. And um, so since now, wh when did you leave the club, Bob? Uh, probably 90, 91, that period. I was okay. doing a lot of work that I couldn't talk about. Ah, well then. Uh, so uh, at that point, uh, so the, it was during the time the A3000 was coming out then? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so a couple of things that I wanted to talk about while everybody's still online, we've sort of skirted around a couple of them, is uh, first of all, I wanted to address Amy West a little bit more. Uh, the show is still on as far as we're concerned. Uh, I haven't yet talked to the hotel because we've only been doing uh, insanity for the last several days here in California. But um, I will be talking to them sometime this week as I can get a hold of them. We have until June or July to modify the contract. Uh, and so uh, the, the only thing that will actually uh, derail anything will be continuing travel restrictions. So um, even at that, we may try to do something. At this point, everything's still on. And I just wanted to let those of you who are distant know that so that uh, changes uh, hopefully we'll be able to make changes as soon as possible or as soon as needed so that you can modify your arrangements as well. Uh, but right now we're still going. Um, also, we'd like your feedback on this online meeting and uh, so we can sort of judge how it came through on your end and how uh, we can do it better next time. Uh, it's very much of an experiment and uh, I'll let Jerry tell you a little bit about uh, how he uh, came across this technology and uh, how this all happened. So I'll make that part of his story. And I'd like to encourage all of you, uh, even uh, LD in New Jersey and Bill at home, I guess. Right, Bill? Um, you may be in New Jersey as well. And, uh, so uh, yeah, Bill was with us for a while from from his home office. So um, even no matter where you are, you can do a demo for us online, which is really kind of cool. Yeah, so uh, that's where that's where we are right now with it. And uh, can everybody hear me, hear me right now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I gotta take off, guys. Have a good day. Bye, Bill. Okay, thanks for joining, Bill. Appreciate it. Bye, bye. Bye bye. Um, so yeah, you can, um, and that's one of the things we're probably going to be asking questions like that throughout the uh, time that we're on, just to make sure that we're staying on, and that the transmission is good. Um, so uh, also watching the mail for more SAC news uh, is uh, something that will probably ramp up a little bit during this time. As all of us know, it, nothing replaces an in-person face-to-face meeting because we are much more interactive at that point and not listening to people like you're listening to me now. Uh, most of the time, we're pretty much interactive and got a lot of input going on. So um, but one thing I wanted to emphasize as well, besides that email evaluation or yeah, email evaluation, is that we do have a YouTube channel. And I'm going to turn the camera around a little bit. Uh, just so you can see some of the uh, some of the content 
Now, this is not going to be a great display, but I'm going to try to make it work and turn around with it so that you can see what I'm seeing, sort of. Um, so there's some of our past demos. And um, of course, if you click on anything like this, it'll, it'll jump out to uh, the full screen. If I can point at my Roku player instead of uh, pointing at the screen, uh, it should uh, make it work for us. There we go. Um, so when I was doing the demo a few months ago, someone in the crowd had asked about a front end for WC Low. And I never really thought about it, but it's common with other other gaming platform systems you know, like so that's part of what we have available so far. Uh, and we're currently recording this session, which will be posted online as soon as the recording is complete uh, so that we can have a record of these meetings as well. Uh, so uh, if you all haven't gone to sleep yet, I'd like to <laughs> hand it over to, uh, to uh, uh, actually the other thing on the agenda that we needed to talk about too was the um, was class in Los Angeles, and um, it's been postponed due to the coronavirus uh, thing. And uh, also, Bill Borsari just told us uh, that uh, there is uh, no update so far. Uh, the event is on hold at this point, so we'll know as soon as he does. Bill, that is as the organizer, uh, what else is happening with the uh, Amiga 35 gathering in the Bay Area. Uh, so right now we have those two postponed and it's, it's really nice that the uh, venues have been very understanding with the organizers. I, I know that Bill put down a lot of money and I'm sure Robert probably did too for class, uh, but and Bill did for Amiga 35 with a hotel. So because of this, they've been really great uh, at working with uh, both Bill and Robert. And it's been really nice to see that. Uh, and I'm sure that they're probably, you know, losing business by the day just because people can't travel. But um, that's, you know, the situation that we're in right now. And uh, we're gonna try to make all of this a lot more doable as time goes on uh, and hopefully to gather face to face uh, in uh, October here in Sacramento for MU West. So uh, let's see here, looking at my agenda, I think I'm done with my items. And so I wanted to turn it over to Jerry for the rest of it. Thanks, Brian. Um, sure, you bet. So it was kind of fortunate that we got access to the go-to meeting. This is actually uh, for my wife's company, they said we could use it for a meeting because they don't do weekend work. So we would just sit there unused otherwise. So we got access to this and it's gonna be a, a fun meeting online like this. It's something that I'm starting to do more with my team because we've been ordered to shelter in place. So I'm doing a lot of, a lot of remote work with my team um, with, our, with my company's video conferencing, which I don't think is quite as nice as, as this one. Um, another little plug before I get into my, my demo here, um, Amiga Future, they, um, they did me a solid, my, my last, the, the, the latest edition came out, but I hadn't had the previous edition delivered yet, and I contacted them and said, hey, I didn't get my last edition, and they sent that out with the current edition and made that right for me, no questions asked, so um, they did a great job. I think probably a lot of us know of and or subscribe to it already, but um, if you weren't looking for some reading material and you don't have Amiga Future coming to you, it would be a, a nice add to your to your reading material. That's I agree. Cool. So um, a couple of meetings ago, some people showed some light interest in programming. Uh, my background um, originally was application development with Microsoft Tools before I got into being team lead and then now managing um, teams of developers. So I don't code professionally production work anymore, 
Um, but I do tinker around at home a lot of stuff with different game engines. Like um, I've done some Unity and Unreal, just just tinkering around. Um, and my latest, I picked up this book, um, Retro Game Dev by Derek Morris. <clears throat> uh, it's a really really nice. It's a you can see it's a it's a pretty thin book. It's <laughs> nice high level read so if you are interested in game development he doesn't go and try to teach you coding necessarily um the samples are all all in machine language it's all for the commodore 64 and he'll he gets kind of high level into um into getting you started so he talks a little bit in chapter one about about number systems base 2 base 16 number systems it uh, gets a little bit into Commodore 64 hardware, um, the VIC chip, the, the CPU, the SID chip for sound. Um, once again, very high level stuff. Uh, a very brief introduction to assembly language. Um, and then he jumps into starting to program. And he gets into the IDE, which is kind of amazing that the, the community we're in has so many generous people. The um, IDE is a free, let me see if I can find my mouse here, is a free product. <clears throat> let me get it started up here and I'll switch the screen share over to um, to show this. It's, it's the CBM PRG Studio. So it's in screen sharing, switch this over. So you should be seeing that program now. <clears throat> And there, the, the little splash screen that comes up has the retro game dev book advertised in it. They got a little synergy going on there. So he tells you a little bit about about this um, this product and how to set it up, set it up to connect to the Vice emulator that a lot of you might be familiar with. And then he goes into kind of just basic game logic. All games, whether you're doing a AAA game in Unity today or you're doing a Machine Language Commodore 64 game, they all work on a basic game loop where you're going through and checking for, for story, you know, controller inputs. What do I do with those controller inputs? What do I do on this screen refresh cycle? AI to move enemies around. Checking for collisions with bullets and environment. Um, he goes into to that kind of stuff, and then from there goes into a couple of sample games, very primitive like Space Invaders kind of a game, and then a a primitive kind of um, Super Mario kind of platformer run and jump kind of game. Uh, and he goes through and uses each of those to, um, to to tell you a little bit about getting into the game development. So, for instance, with the very first chapter, when he's talking about the little Space Invaders game, um, he explains to you that you need a way to, to jump into your game. So the, the CBM PRG Studio can actually generate this little blurb of code here, which is a basic loader. And when you load your PRG file and do a list command, you see that's a basic program with one command, which is basically telling you to jump into your machine language code for your game. That actually jumps you into here, which it turns off interrupts. Is there a particular address you have to jump into? The address that you jump into is 2064, which is 0815, which is where this guy is. So you can actually do like a build project to memory, and it will show you the memory. I don't know. Can you guys see this this RAM window that popped yeah. up, or is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can see the the 0800 is the start of basic. And you can see the 0E080A matches the bytes that it's <coughs> putting into here. And then it will um, go into 2064. And then it will jump into, I guess it's 810 is where this starts into. So if you wanted to look up the SEI instruction, get the mnemonic code, you could, you could verify that the, the codes here are the SEI code. But that gets you um, that that sys gets you into this this right here. Then they do this command, which I don't fully understand. This looks like looks like this is the interrupt for um, the run stop key 
run software store, so you can't break into the program. Um, looks like it's in that interrupt vector, but you've turned off interrupt, so I don't know why you need to do this as well. Still kind of figuring that part out. But then just to get you started, they just set some background colors. They fill the screen with the character A <clears throat> and um, set some colors in there. So let's see here. The the lib set screen set colors is a is a macro. So in assembly, a macro is a little bit of code and it will get copied into this location when the when the assembler goes through creating your program. So we can do the so I just did a quick find to get us into that macro. You got a define macro statement. Like I said, it'll just take and it'll copy this bit of code into that area where we just called it. And then in, in the in the IDE here, every variable is a slash number, slash one, two, three, four. So then it's um loads the accumulator with that color code and then it sticks it into the memory address that controls that color. So there's a lot of memory addresses that are defined for specific things like sprites and colors and what have you that once you punch those values into those memory addresses, that, that sets it for the program. So it sets a blue border, a white background, and then and then black for the other background colors that we're not using really. And then the lip screen set 1000. Let's see if I can find that real quick. So here's the macro that's going to fill the screen with a, with a value. So you got, um, you load the accumulator with the value that was set in. And then you load the X register with 250. There's technically a thousand character spots on the screen. And what this does is it does a loop and it does a quarter it does a quarter of the screen, one element of a quarter of the screen on each loop. So it would do an A and A and A and A. Then the next loop would do A, 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 and it would keep looping through until each quarter is done. And then basically the BNE command looks to see if the X is at zero yet. It gets decremented each loop through. So it'll be 249, 248, 247 until it's just done. So if we build and run, I think I have to switch over to the emulator to show the run. So the emulator should be showing now. And you see the blue border with the white background with the black A's that have filled the screen. And that loop would fill, you know, one A, another A, another A, another A in one loop, then it'd go back around. So if you could watch it paint, you would see the, the screen in quarters slowly filling with A's if you we were to slow that down in slow motion and watch it paint the, the letter zone. Mm. Mm. Let's see here. Mm. Hey guys, can anybody hear me? Uh huh. Yes, you, Dave. Yes, we can. Great. <coughs> Let's see here. Mm. Let's go back to. We're in the middle of our demo, Dave. <coughs> So if we go back to our well, code here, this is where we can start playing around with stuff, you know, and, and learning a little more. We can, we can, we could say select changes from A to B, and then just build, build and run. It will automatically bring up our emulator. I'll switch that back over, and you can see we just reran the program. And now the letter B is in there instead of A. So that's one of the things I like to do with these sample programs is just start substituting things in, seeing how things work, and what have you. So 
that gets us up through basically chapter six, where we got the basic thing going. And then he proceeds to go into then taking and customizing these character graphics so that that he um, remaps, I'll forget which characters he uses, but for instance, he can take like, the, you know, the A, B, C, D, E characters and remap them or, or repaint them, if you will, to be like the spaceship for the, um, for the game. So let's see here, go back to program studio. Oh, they've got different tools in here. So there's the, did the character editor show up on your guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Those are cool. Are I've cool. used one. I use those. And then we can bring up the scratch pad. And I haven't gotten as far as actually playing with this yet, but basically you can you can go through and um I got a picture here of the black screen with the spaceship at the bottom. Kind of hard to see there on my camera. But basically you he he remaps these characters to 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 build the spaceship, to build the aliens. And then from there, you can kind of see, well, I know how to put characters on the screen. Now I can put these characters that I've drawn special into the screen. And now I'm starting to pull this together to look a little bit more like a, a game. So, so that's about as far as I've gotten on that. If there's interest in this, I would be happy to follow up in future meetings to do a couple more chapters to show how this game comes together. There's... Um, uh, it's, like I said, we're on chapter 6, and by the time we get to chapter 10, 11, 12, it looks like is the, the complete game. So there's about six more chapters of filling in pieces like this to get a game up and running. Can you show the cover of the book one more time? Yeah. And the... Um, Actually, that book found me on Amazon and bought it, and I have... Not even hardly opened it, so I'm, I'm getting encouragement. Huh. <laughs> you know, to go, who to go to who for help. Well, yep. the nice thing is it's a great read, even if you don't plan on coding a game, just to get a deeper understanding of what happens, what you know, what needs to happen to to make a game come to life on a on a on a Commodore 64. He's also working on a couple of follow-ups of this. He's working on a intro one for the nintendo and he's working on a more advanced follow-up to this one for the commodore 64. So i'm looking forward to those being published so if we were to start from ground zero uh yeah how would we do that uh to get to where you, not necessarily where you are but to get the tools going uh on the environment that you're using to get the tools running <laughs> um for it's it's really quite simple. The CBM program studio is just a, a free download um, off the internet. You just bring that down, do a quick install, it's in there. The Vice emulator is technically part of the Amiga Forever package, which I already had installed. So I just had okay. to um, figure out the path that the Amiga Forever program uh, you know, installer puts that program. So I could add that path to the CBM program studio so it knows where to find it. And then the author has a link to his site to download all of his sample code. So okay. does 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 any of this stuff come with the book, or do you have to buy the sample stuff separately? Um, the sample code is a free download from his site. Um, he does he does ask that you create an account to download, but um, but that's free as well. On his site, he is selling videos for a for a racer game that he's making where he's asking for like $5 per video to go through a video series to make a game. Um, I haven't really bought into that um, just yet. The I'm just happy to, to go through the samples that are that are free and available. He's, he's also posted um, three or four copies of the games from the book that the community has taken and added to. So whereas the Space Invaders game that he has is pretty much a, the, the, the aliens are kind of static. They shoot at you, but you and you, sh and you can move and shoot back. But then someone else made it to where the aliens move and then regenerate or, or, or respawn, if you will. So he's published that up there as well. So you can take a look at their code and see how they enhanced the sample project to get them 
the additional motion in and the respawning and that kind of stuff. So that was a nice add. So the link to his website then is on our front page agenda, right? Um, I've got the link to um, his website, yes, is on the, is, is on okay. the agenda. So, okay, good. yes, it's www.retrogamedev.com. And then I'm sure you can can find it on Amazon. The, the price of the book was $14, so it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I did a Commodore 64 yeah. search, and it came right up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty popular book at the moment. That's very cool. So that brings us to the end of the planned agenda items for the broadcast for the meeting. Um, so we do um, we did get a lot of attendees. So um, I'm encouraged to see that we we had ten people um, on the line. I guess eleven total over the the whole broadcast. So that was that was really good. Like Brian said, you know, please um, email Brian or myself with your thoughts on what you liked, what you didn't like, what worked, what didn't work, what you might like to see in the future. Uh, one of the things that Brian and, I, Brian and I have discussed is the reach that we get through this format is is phenomenal because we can go nationwide, worldwide even with attendees. So the thought of possibly bringing this into the more formal parts of our normal meetings that we have at the hotel there um, could be something that we you know continue doing so that some of our folks that can that can still attend from the bay area or from from wherever so please please provide that feedback um be some motivation for us to keep this going yeah right, well, any closing? last time i saw Go to meeting was probably 2008 when I retired, and it's come a long way. <laughs> Joan worked on the original versions at Intel. Ah, yeah, she was uh, she was uh, she was part of that testing people with that. At the Energy Commission, we used it constantly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it's a great way of getting people together and such. Um, Google keeps saying they're going to get rid of Hangouts, but it's still there for some bizarre reason. But we, you know, who knows when it's going to go away? <laughs> but there's sort of not too much that came to replace it since you know everything. Like that. There's several other ones that are out there, but I mean, this is the first time I've got it to work actually. No. Right. Can we have every, can we have everybody online uh, attempt to talk so we can hear you talk and uh, test the audio uh, in a uh, link and see how it works. So if everybody who is currently watching could say something, uh, that would be nice so we could test it. Something? Hey, hey. Hey, Chris. Something from Bill. Hey, guys. Bob, this is your S. Hey. Chris. <laughs> it it would is be nice. filthy. I am finding all sorts of critters in it and nasty stuff. It was sitting outside in a garage, but it wasn't wet. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love filthy old computers that need work. Well, that's what you said. I've got a garage full. <laughs> that's my filthiest and oldest. Yep. Hey, Jerry, uh, on hosting the meeting. Um, I, I also, maybe before we uh, kick off again, maybe do a little bit of a round the room type thing. Um, that way we all can kind of formally check in and get familiar with who's who by faces that pop up too. So oh. There are faces that I've never seen and probably some have never seen mine. Uh, that's a good idea, Chris. Um, and I don't have this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I've been I've been learning assembly language on the Commodore 64. It's very it's very insightful and understanding <laughs> what is actually going on under the hood of all computers. Yes. It's just, that's probably one of the slowest, oldest things you could possibly do, and it means it's much more simple. Uh -huh. Yes. It was incredibly complex. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so I, I like the idea of doing a quick round robin. Um, we got I've got a list of attendees on one of my panels here for, for hosting. I don't know if you guys get the same view or not, but we do yeah. have 
Amiga yep. Dave joining yep. us. So Amiga, could you uh, Amiga Dave, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, this is uh, David Morris. I've been to many of the Emmy West shows over the past few years. Uh, I missed yep. a couple, but uh, um, I've, I've relocated back to Northern California and uh, just unpacked my X1000 last night. So uh, it was good timing. I'll be setting it up either today or tomorrow, get it running again. Thanks for joining us. Cool. Okay. Yes, thanks for joining us. Bill? Oh, am I here? I can hear you. Good. And then we have Bob. I can't see everybody here, so I still have to figure out, get everybody on the screen at one time. Uh huh. You heard from me. <laughs> and then Brian's next alphabetically. We all know Brian. Yeah, hi there. It's uh, thanks for everybody for dialing in and taking your Sunday afternoon time. We really appreciate it. I um, see Chris already chimed in. Eldie's joining us from, I believe, Connecticut. Yep, all the way from Connecticut and uh, just a few miles away, unfortunately, from COVID 19 Central. But thank you all very much for the invitation and uh, really been enjoying the opportunity to, to see, quote unquote, you guys here. Uh, outside of Amy West. I hope you all will continue with this format while the crisis continues. Uh, maybe I can cook up a couple of demos or something to share. It's nice to have a, a user group again. Uh, well, you're certainly welcome to demo anytime. And I think uh, we're gonna be doing this for the foreseeable future. Uh, hopefully it won't be too terribly long, but we could probably use it as a uh, continuing part of our meetings anyway. So uh, it's really a great thing to have available. Thanks for dialing in, Al. Appreciate it. Yeah, with this particular software, I can turn presentation mode over to other people, and you can screen sharing and stuff from your machine. So the only challenge that I think we'll have is obviously demos on our X5000s or our Amigas. We might have to point a webcam at the screen or something like that, unless someone can, um, can help us with better ways to connect our, our older machines to the broadcast. Um, Bill, who was on earlier, Bruce Basari, I know he does a lot of podcasting. He might can help us out. I might reach out to Doug, see what he can do to help us with, with connecting things in. Um, so next on our list is George. Hey, hello. Sorry, I don't have my camera on, but I'm in. I'm in. I'm in my dungeon right now. All right. Yeah. Oh, did you guys get? Did you guys find out who that person was that called me looking for Brian? No. No, not yet. Yeah, that's an odd person. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, this is uh, this is normal stuff for me already. I mean, next week I'm hopefully we're going to be getting a new system put together, so I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to try move, moving, try and move everything all to one side of the room because we have the wired over there, and we're hopefully going up in bandwidth speed here because we have to change out our legacy DSL to uh, fiber and everything. So that's going to be good. So. You do more of these meetings. It's, I think this would be great to actually even add whiz that if we have the physical meetings for the people who can't meet it, uh, make it too. Yeah. And uh, I just found out too, my phone that I was doing the videos for some of the stuff we have up on YouTube. I now have manual controls. I can actually do more effects and, and shooting better qualities and such too. So and drop it directly live to YouTube if we needed to. They updated the cameras on that thing. So hopefully we'll have the. Real food meetings and, and virtuals all at the same time, maybe here next time. Yeah, very nice. That's a good idea. Um, next is Isaac. You're muted. There we go. Hi there. Hi, Isaac. I don't know if you guys can hear me okay. We can hear you now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm I'm a brand new member. I'm the guy that came in with the Amiga 500 Plus from uh, from Britain, uh, yeah. the PAL model. And I just wanted to let you know that you guys really helped me a lot. I have it up and running, and I was able to fix that uh, old Commodore monitor. And I've been uh, playing a few games, but I, I really don't have a lot that I can run. I have only a few floppies. <laughs> I don't have any other updates than that. That's a great update. Thank you. That's a great update. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate all the hospitality in this group. Fantastic. Cool. And Robert? Hi. I'm here. <laughs> Just uh, probably have a lot more time now to set up my new computer room, so it'll keep me busy for a while. Cool. Yeah, thanks for doing the demo last time around. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, we did get it on video. We just haven't gotten it up on the YouTube channel yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was fun. <laughs> nice. So I like um, Chris's workshop view the best. Now, right now, he's standing in front of it. But right in the back wall, there's a TIE fighter hanging. You can see um, from the from the, <laughs> the top there. So that um that's that is that is nice yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect yeah, very cool and the amiga shirt today too i mean that's there you go fantastic yeah yep. <laughs> all right well, I'm sorry it took me so long to um, post it on uh that web page yes oh. So Brian, any other thoughts on closing? Well, I just, uh, I think as we get better at this, uh, we'll probably have a little more feature to it and uh, also be able to get a little bit more uh, input from each of you along the way uh, as we figure this out. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, we can get perhaps a small uh, monthly report out of everybody who signs in and uh, just what you're doing with your machine, uh, be it uh, you know, Amiga or C64, and uh, trying to try to keep it, you know, as far related to the club in some way, so that we can actually, uh, you know, make more use of what we're doing individually. And uh, we've kind of been uh, doing this in person for quite a long time, uh, as we uh, get to, you know, at this point, break off and. Uh, usually just do individual discussions of projects and things of that nature in person. Uh, so uh, perhaps we can do that uh, either verbally or by text or both uh, in future uh, birthdays like this. I want to thank Jerry again for uh, dedicating his time and resources and discovering this particular piece of uh, software so that we can actually get together like this. I think it's been a lot of fun for me. and. Hopefully, we can uh, develop it a little bit more. Uh, if you have resources, uh, linked resources that we could share during this time, I I think if Jerry, if you'd be willing to receive those links, mm -hmm. then perhaps we could review them uh, and include them in a future meeting. Uh, perhaps even thematically uh, might be a possibility. So uh, there's a lot of things we can do with this. But uh, like we said, we I think. Jerry had uh, come up with it what three days ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> no. so I, uh, we just wanted to try it just because we had a meeting scheduled. And uh, mm -hmm. so in between now and next month, we have a, a little bit of time to develop. So if any of you have ideas for demos that you want to do, or things to look at on the web, uh, or things that we can see uh, from your uh, personal computer room, whatever you have available, that would be great too. So just uh, email to Jerry uh, about that or to myself, but if we can just, just keep it with Jerry, at least we can have a common collection point that way. So those are my thoughts on it so far, and I'm sure we'll be putting out more uh, thoughts on the SAC mailing list. I watch that for more news as far as uh, future meetings are concerned. Sounds good. If you don't have it, I just in the chat threw my email up there um, as a reminder. Um, I usually have it on the agenda. I took it off to make a little bit of room this time, but it's there in the chat. It's in the old agendas that are on Facebook. If you want to go look those up? And I believe it's on our SAC.org site as well. So it is on the SAC uh, website now. Great. Thanks, Bill. Okay. I just I just saw the hidden chat there. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. 
Yeah, it takes a little bit of time so to get used to the format or the where everything's hidden in here, but uh, yeah, works pretty good. <laughs> a little red, yeah. there's a little red thing. Like, we have chat here. Oh, we, oh, there. It is. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, if uh, nobody else has anything else to add, I, I guess we're done for this time. And uh, so watch for the notice for next month's meeting, and uh, we'll hit it again then. Sounds good. I'm good. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Nice talking to everybody. All right. See you yes. Later. Take care, everyone. Stay, Stay healthy, safe. Guys. Hey, Jerry. Uh huh. Once everyone kind of drops, I'm just gonna. Everybody say to open up the um the end of the meeting, end of the final part of the meeting, just like we would have like a, a social time. Dave out there. Um, you know, hang out, uh talk a little bit about what we might have that's not necessarily club related that would be of interest to common. Um, but more social type of aspects about this point in the meeting structure. Yeah, I'm not I, I like that idea. I was thinking about that. I'm just not sure how to moderate that since once you know if, you know we at our club club meetings we tend to like break off into two three four different tables right. and different conversations but we can't talk over each other on this and hear each other so we kind of have to have one conversation at a time i don't think there's a way in this software to break off into subgroups like sub meetings no, probably not, but I imagine, you know, just getting an opportunity to uh, encourage some degree of socializing. Um, uh, that way, the, the again, making it a, a human connection aspect of it. And I know some people are probably still hanging on. Maybe somebody else has something to say. Well, I was hoping for that kind of capability myself. I, and uh, I, I think there's probably some way to do it somehow. Uh, even if we were all, uh, you know, I, I know I've seen uh, commercials for GoToMeeting. I know that what uh, Jerry has in front of him is a lot more than what we have in front of us. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I don't know what whether users can do the same sort of multiple split screen thing or not. Yeah, it does present a lot of challenges, I would imagine. Um, you know, even even in the meetings that we have at work where we're doing virtual teleconferencing and often we don't have video as a part of that. There might That's be a right. little informal time at the beginning of the meeting and there might be some informal time after the meeting, you know. Sure. It, it's, fairly un it's fairly unconstrained, but like what just happened, people can talk over each other and it's kind of hard to avoid that when you've got some degree of latency built in. Mm. When I was still yeah, working, that's true. video con conferencing at work, but we had to set up set it up with a telephone company first. So uh, I'm sure the technology has changed. So yeah, that might be something to explore. Is actually doing conference calling. Uh, just something to think about might be something a, a way to explore it a little bit um sidebars or post topics um you know just uh hey how you doing brian you doing okay you know that kind of thing sure no i think it's a great idea uh and it would really add to the uh you know the the contact part of it which i really value as the club you know i've i've said a lot that this is the most creative group of people that i know I uh, mm -hmm. and uh, of course I don't get around too much, but you know it, at least it is uh, uh, something that is uh, really meaningful to me, and uh, I'm I'm glad it's meaningful to enough people to uh, at least collect the kind of group we did today. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know LD LD has mentioned it to me at Andy West over the last two years. If you guys have he said if you guys ever do anything teleconferencing, let me know. So we finally. You know, I have, have made a work, uh, thanks to Jerry. And uh, so I, I think that's why he was here, because he was really eager to do it anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, a computer club, using computers. <laughs> yeah, I was I was hopeful that 
Michael Salcedo would come in today too. I uh, and uh, I I was uh, I'm missing him to tell you the truth. I uh, and I'm, I'm glad everybody else is here too. You go through a lot at home right now. I thought so. Brian, uh, I know that you and I are practically neighbors. So if you guys need anything, um, you know, you need uh, any kind of running out, pick up something, feel free to holler, okay? Definitely will. Uh, I mean, so I far, that hasn't happened. Down, like 15 feet and spray it down with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> UV lights, UV lights work. Gosh, I've got one of those. <laughs> Yeah, so they're useful for retro brighting. <laughs> I'm not joking either. Okay. All right. I, I'm a <laughs> All the retro brighters survived the Holocaust because of their UV. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the ridiculous yeah, it's stuff that was. Yeah, the ridiculous stuff that's left on the shelves or, or wasn't left on the shelves is just mind-boggling, you know. I mean, the TP disappearing. In it. I mean, I, I was at the Walmart. I met the guy who does resupplying, and he's laughing his head off. He says, we make this stuff onto order. So everything is like, you know, you want air in it, you don't want air in it, fluff, two ply, three ply, whatever. He says, all they're going to do is drive the cost up. He says, once all this is over, he says, they're going to go, why isn't our TP, like, you know, three bucks anymore? Why is it 10? Well, because you did this idiots and it's gonna take a while to make it go back down but he says he says i he says, he says they, they buy it i'm just gonna make more money uh and he says he says there's no need for all this there was no even no one even got it and i tried going on the internet to figure out where this started and it was from a translation from someone in in china and the person posted it badly and they posted it up there saying, oh, no, we need to go get all these toiletries because we're, we're shutting down cities. Well, that was there, not here. And so somehow that kind of just went through viral through all the conspiracy theory people. And <laughs> I just, you know, and, and, you know, it's like, you know, I, you know, it's like the meat aisle is all gone, but they still left the Beyond Meat, uh, the Beyond meat there. So uh, it's now... But I've been to Walmart recently. That all the meats restocked. They've still got problems with bread and TP. Um, the funniest thing, though, the whole out of all the stuff in touch in the store, they left all the birth control. I'm thinking, boy, in nine <laughs> months, it's going to be an explosion. Maybe boom. <laughs> Maybe get this locked up. I don't know why. I keep telling them, don't lock up the birth control. Let them steal that, please. They're going to be thieves. Let them stop with produce. But you know. The madness of this all is like, I don't remember doing this for N1H1. And it's just like, and that was a thousand times more contagious. It's just mind boggling. But, but <laughs> okay, so true confession here. A month ago, I went to Walmart and I bought pretty much triplicate of all paper products. Yeah. Because right about that time, they were doing, there were runs on the stores in Australia. Yeah, and I don't know why. I said, I'm going to get some now while I can. And I'm glad I did. Yeah. I mean, as stupid as it is, as stupid as it is, I got enough to last the family three months. That was my goal. Now, I did talk to Costco, and this was the interesting thing: all their Middle Eastern and Mediterranean people raided the stores fast. That's why all the water vanished. Started went by. So all these people from Iran, Iraq, all these people that are here who hit those stores fast because it's huge over there. But the thing is, it's not COVID over there. It's it's the MERS, it's MERS and the COVID now, yeah. So it's like they're getting a double whammy, which I'm glad we're not. But yeah, I'm thinking there's a yeah, lot of exactly. yeah. It's amazing how much how how at the speed of what uh, paranoia travels, as we, we say. Agreed. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I call this, this is a big mind hack on people of paranoia. It's like, you know, I I, I criticize you know I'll see a news thing. It's like the Pending or the terrible shortage of, I say, you know, the, the temporary, if you put the word temporary shortage in there, it's a lot cheerier than saying shortage because it sounds more menacing. And the, one person just jumped all over my case. I said, look, I'm glad they're making math, some, some fashion designers making masks for medical people, which it should be, you know, but still, the, the, the verbiage, you got to use better verbiage, people. Communicate. You're supposed to be journalists. 
communicate with positiveness, not this doom and gloom. I know you want ratings, but still. And, you know, the person who got belligerent was me and said something, and now they're pulled off of Twitter because they did that. Oh, well. <laughs> Yeah, I've got nearly three. I've got I've got I got twenty eight thousand. I got twenty eight hundred followers on my on there, and it's going up. You know, I'm I'm, I'm happy. Uh, you know, it's all cybersecurity stuff, and I mean, we're all we're all sitting here looking at this going, yeah, because on top of the on top of the virus, now we got people that are doing more crimes by sending you fake stuff on the virus. But interesting enough, a group that's known for doing the ransomware actually went after a secondary ransomware company that, was, that were attacking a health, uh, one of the health uh, uh, places and got their data back for them. And uh, I think that's the first time I've seen the, the bad guy say, wait a minute, we, we may like want to bleed you for money, but we're not going to let people die. And that was smart <laughs> of them. I mean, uh, it does show that there are people out there that do, do have a brain at some point, uh, you know, even though I find ransomware the most despicable piece of, you know, usage of the net ever. But it's like, you know, it's, it's the community is like, we're all, okay, we're all nerds. We're used to this uh, social distancing, so we're, we're, we're pros at this. <laughs> I've been doing this for 25 years, yeah. So, yeah. Did you already say what project you're working on, Chris? Uh, hmm? This is, so this is Bob's um, old SX64. Hmm. And uh, uh, it's my second SX64, but this one I've not touched until a couple days ago and did some testing. Uh, this is the RAM bank on it right here, mm. and I think bank zero is bad. So I'm going to replace the RAM here, put it in sockets, and do some testing. Also, this is the um, the kernel ROM right here, and it's not a standard SX64 kernel ROM. It's a Commodore 64 kernel ROM. Mm. So I'm going to revert it back to a proper uh, SX64 kernel ROM. Uh, as part of my restoration, but it's filthy. And I've got, I am just covered in filth already. <laughs> oh, dust. If you revert it back to the old RAM, um, the old uh, ROM chip for the six, uh, 64, maybe that'll fix yeah. the uh, RAM. Yeah, that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix both yeah, of the, of the, the although I might, I might use this as an opportunity to make a, to convert it to Jiffy DOS as well and do a Jiffy DOS conversion, and that probably would be even better. Sound like a fun project. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it, it will be fun when it's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, there's always risk, of course. It was working before I opened it to an extent. Let's see if I can change the the ball towards the positive of better working as opposed to not working at all, which is also a possible outcome. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, of course. Yeah. With every project. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a pretty good success rate. Um, so so I did. I don't think Brian. Um, I forget his last name. The Italian name. Um, Robert. Yes, yes. He he came over a couple times the last month or so, and I was helping him reconfigure his uh, power PC board. He has one of those warp power PC boards that's like really nice and expensive. Um, yeah. He has had problems with it freezing on his 3000 setup. It's been freezing during drive transfers. And we have we have down clocked it a couple times by reconfiguring the resistors on it. And so far, he's still not having any success with it. He's still having freezing issues. But that, that's well, my show. What caused any particular program that freezes it? Or? I, I wish he was online because he could probably talk to it and maybe, you know, get some of the collective wisdom here. And maybe somebody has, has similar experiences. But... Uh, it, it, he just does this when it's transferring large files uh, that he's getting this like hard freeze. I used to get those too. I was transferring too many files at once. Yeah. And, uh, some of the files had wrong characters or something in them. And the file itself froze the computer because mm. it had the wrong file name. Or too long. <laughs> okay. Because you don't want to go so deep into them. Um, go ahead. Sir. 62%. Hey, uh, George, we can hear you playing Ingress. 
No, I just I mean, I've left it on because I was I was doing something earlier. And I, um, I, I'm beginning to think Brian's issue is actually the power supply. Um, he may his power supply might not be adequate, or it might be fading a little bit because it's using the power PC is when it seems to do it the most. And uh, I would imagine that's when your most intensive loading is on your on your computer, plus a mechanical drive spinning really rapidly. Yeah, that's a pretty good uh, presumption. Yeah, we're, 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 replacing the caps on, we're replacing the caps on all the motherboards, but the power supply's got more heat in there. It makes the caps, caps even more than the motherboard. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, that's all I've got. Um, been doing a lot of uh, catching up on projects. I'm in a work from home state. I've been that way for a couple of weeks now. Um, got a neat battle station built up for <laughs> for running Amiga 64 and my work computer all side by side. Mm -hmm. but, that's yeah, that's it. That's my next project. I'm going to check out, guys, because i got to go do some stuff around the house here, and everybody's keeps coming over like, are you done yet? <laughs> I, <didn't say> that. <laughs> I know, it's like, I have headphones on. Yes, I'm still doing something. I mean, I don't do the headphones all the time, but, you know. All right, guys, but, I'm going to check out, too. Thank you for the meeting. I think this was productive, and um, looking forward to when we can get back together again in person, but obviously now is not a good time for that. Yeah. going to hear about the project. See you hey, later. Yes. Yeah. See you guys. Okay. Thanks. See ya. All right. All right. See you. I'm just gonna get out of here. Okay. I'm Bye, my, guys. I'm borrowing my wife's computer. Bye. I gotta get off uh, this get her computer back too. So we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Okay, Bill. Good to hear from you. Okay. Bye. So is is it just dozens? I believe so. Um, Isaac was was kind of double logged in there, and it still has a remnant of him, but it does say offline next to his name, so I think it is just us now. Okay. So how do you think we could do it better next time? Um, <clears throat> I think, um, I don't know, I think it went pretty well. I like the, the ending there. We yeah. did kind of get a little social chat going didn't turn into chaos so i like that yeah i, I think that was uh, i think it went well too uh, all the screen displays came through everybody could see and hear what you were doing uh which i thought was very strong and uh so that's the other thing the only thing that i can think of for next time well right now i'm sure i'll think of other things but is to be able to uh, 